Before I start this video, I'd like to apologize for using the term Sub-Saharan in my previous video. Some people find this term offensive. I promise I've been using it uh, in a geographical sense. So again, Netflix is trying to bury black African history, which has included dozens and dozens of powerful leaders. But instead, they insist on blackwashing other countries' cultures. They'd rather pander to Afrocentrists whose logic boils down to trust me bro. So I will do your homework for you, so you don't keep stealing my culture and claiming it was someone else's. And I will show you 5 different African black leaders who have left their marks on history. Before I start the list, I will have to apologize that I will butcher some of these names, so I will list them on the screen, but I will attempt my best at pronouncing them. These leaders are not in a particular order, I just picked this randomly. Number 5. Queen Zingambandi She was born into the royal family of Ndongo, the kingdom that at the time covered half of what is now known as Angola sometime around 1583. This was at the time uh, was when Europe was increasingly encroaching on Africa and her country was sandwiched between Portugal and Spain. She was sent to negotiate with the Portuguese by her brother, the king at the time, uh, and she was a competent negotiator. She now had a very famous incident when the Portuguese royal envoy refused to give her a chair uh, as a sign of power uh, on their side, and she signaled uh, for an attendant uh, to get down on their hands and knees and act like her chair for the remainder of discussion to demonstrate the authority and respect she commanded. She avoided having to furnish slaves from her own people by using cunning diplomacy to get weapons and military support from the Portuguese. When her brother passed away in 1626, Nzinga became queen and the Portuguese made an attempt to gain power. She escaped, created a new kingdom called Matamba in Inner Africa, embracing the escaped slaves and once more relying on her diplomatic prowess to form alliances with other nations and the Dutch to harass the Portuguese. She continued to fight the Portuguese long into her 60s, leading soldiers into combat herself, while she concentrated on successfully transforming Matamba into a commercial powerhouse. The Portuguese had enough in 1957 and agreed to a peace treaty that gave Nodongo back to the queen. Number 4. Emperor Sani Ali Burr Often referred to as Ali the Great, he seized control of the little empire uh, in the upper Niger Valley close to Gao's capital. During his rule, he had to thwart the Mali kingdom's ambitions, but he recognized chances for his kingdom to expand as Mali's power waned. The first legendary emperor of the Songhai Empire was Sonny Ali Burr. During his rule from 1464 to 1492, he strengthened the empire's size and power. He established the powerful Sudanese a commercial empire that brought prosperity and wealth to the eventual Songhai Empire. He also took control of Timbuktu and Dijin, two of Mali's most significant cities, which gave him access to the area's trade routes. Number 3. Iwari the Great Prince Ogun adopted the name Iwari, which translates into the trouble has ceased, following the assassination of his brother and subsequent appointment as the new Oba, or a king, uh, if you uh, want to use a different term. Ogudigan, which translates into the great, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, was later added to his name, but the new Oba was more than just a name. He was one of the greatest rulers that the Benin Empire had ever seen. As Oba, he played a significant role in ensuring the Benin Empire's wealth and territory continued to expand. He became one of the greatest African leaders of his time because of that. One of Iwari's first actions was to rebuild Benin, the city that had been destroyed by the fire he started. He continued his work by expanding the empire's territory and changing the political structure of his kingdom. He expanded the empire by taking control of several towns and cities in the region with success. Iwari is said to have won over 200 battles over various towns and cities according to legends. Number 2. Queen Aminatu also known as Queen Amina, was born to Queen Bakwa Turonko in Zazao, which is in Karanzaria. 
A few researchers and scholars date her rule to be around 1549 as a presumptive successor after the demise of her mother. Known as a military strategist, uh, and she was cavalry trained and fought many wars that helped expand her own kingdom, she also made incursions into the land of Bauchi until she reached the Atlantic Ocean to the south and west. You probably know who's coming at number one, your worst neighbor in a sip game, number one, Shaka Zulu. Son of the then chieftain of the Zulus who were numbered in the 1500s I think, Shaka was a superb military leader who gave his troops assegais, a new long bladed short spear. With the use of that lethal weapon, he and his army swiftly subdued neighboring tribes and enlisted the survivors. By 1823, Shaka controlled present-day Natal and the Zulu's uh, conquest destabilized the entire region. I hope you guys learned something new today. If you'd like another one of these videos, please let me know in the comments. And that's it. I still don't know how to end videos yet, so bye.